All right, there we go. Catherine, I think it just made you a panelist, so we should be all set. All right, yep, there she is. All right, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, just real quick, for those of you that are brand new to Book Creator, this is not a getting started with Book Creator webinar. So we're not gonna go over everything that Book Creator has to offer, but we do have lots of videos on our YouTube channel uh, specifically, so uh, definitely wanna check those out. Um, I'm trying to think what else, yeah, that's it. So again, if you have any questions as we go throughout the webinar today, please put those into the Q&A box. Um, and Catherine and I will be more than happy to answer those. And if you do have any like aha moments, things that really excite you, you can put those into the chat window and we like to see those go as well. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and share my screen here. <clears throat> and oh, this box, this thing always pops up. There we go. Catherine, can we see the book? Yes, we can. All right, perfect. So here we go. Be an author month. All right, Woo! so first off, Let's do some introductions. Hi, Catherine, I switched the page on you. You're first. Catherine, tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm Catherine Capiello. I'm um, the other or one of the um, teacher, success, teacher success manager here at Book Creator. If you are on Twitter, you can follow me at Book Creator um, Cat. Actually, there's an underscore there. I need to edit that. Um, but Book Creator underscore Cat. Um, I'm going to be helping today in the background with the chat, answering your questions, and also just, oh, perfect. Thanks, John. Um, <laughs> also, just um, giving some ideas as we go along the way. So, yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. All right. Thanks, Catherine. And my name is John Smith, for real. Uh, I am the iPod teacher on Twitter. I'm going old school. Uh, people ask me all the time, don't you think you should change that to something else? And I can't. Um, just because I think people would forget who I am. So anyway, I have the iPod teacher on Twitter, so you can always reach out to me there. Uh, if not, I'm also John Smith at bookcreator.com, so you can reach out to me there as well. Uh, taught special ed for 12 years, uh, mostly fifth and sixth grade, occasional kindergarten class thrown in there on me. Uh, and then after that, I was a tech integration specialist for seven years in a different school district. And so now after 19 years of teaching, I am one of two teacher success managers here at Book Creator, along with Catherine. So lots of webinars, lots of training, sales support, uh, conferences, now that that's a thing again, yay. Um, and uh, yeah, basically anything we can do to help teachers be successful using Book Creator. That's, that's really what we're here for. Um, I'm married, I've got three kids, uh, 11, 8, and almost 5, and I love golf, and I love clean cars. So if you're anywhere near Ohio and you want your dirty car cleaned, come on over. I'll be more than happy to do that. Matter of fact, I see two dirty vehicles in my driveway that are waiting for me right now, mine and my wife's. So, all right, super excited about that. So without further ado, let's just keep on going. Um, but before we get too far into this, don't go anywhere. You wanna stick around um, because we might very well have a special surprise at the very end of our webinar. So you definitely wanna stick around for that. All right, because I think we all like surprises. All right. Catherine, let's uh, kick it off with some beginning stuff here. If we don't have Book Creator, how do we go about doing this? Yes. So to start off, you are going to be going to, and I'm going to stick this in the chat. You're going to be go. You're going to app.bookcreator.com, and this is the site where you're going to be logging in at to create your teacher account. And when you do this, make sure when you click on app.bookcreator.com, it's going to take you to the student sign in page first. It's yellow. There it is. Perfect. Make sure you click underneath where it says student sign in. There is a switch to teacher button. So click on that switch to teacher button and it's going to take you to the blue page. This is where you're going to be signing in with your school email address. So with Google, Microsoft, if it's a different email, or with Clever, if it is connected to Clever. You might need to ask your tech team though if it is or not first. Um, and then you just sign in there. It'll um, answer a few questions that are prompted and that will hop you right into your teacher dashboard. All right, awesome. And the teacher dash dashboard looks like this. John was gonna show you in a second. Um, you're going to get a copy of the, this book, by the way, at the end of the session. So don't feel like you have to take a bunch of notes. Um, we have some screenshots in there that are going to show you where you want to go. But John's going to show you just three different sections that you want to be aware of um, to explore when you have some time. The first one is the Discover page. 
So the Discover page is great because there are a lot of example books that students and teachers have written. You can sort by grade level as well as subject area. So whatever you are teaching, you can find examples. And then in the middle right there, there are um, books that teachers have written and some of our ambassadors. Um, they have partnered with our graphic design team to actually write books right within Book Creator. So highly recommend checking those out. One of those right there, the 50 ways to use Book Creator in the classroom. That's one of my favorites. So I highly recommend when you have some time to check out that Discover tab. The second tab or the third tab um, to the right of the Discover tab is the Learn tab. And this is our knowledge base. The knowledge base is where you're going to find all of our support articles. So after today, you might need help with getting started. Well, guess what? We have a whole tab on just getting started with step-by-step -step instructions. You can print them out, share it with your team, and it's going to show you exactly what you need to do. If you're wondering what kind of accessibility features we have, we have a whole section on that. So if you need anything, you're going to want to go to that Learn tab. Then to the right of the Learn tab, we have our certification program. Since this isn't a getting started, getting started webinar, I highly recommend completing the certification program. Um, it's going to be completely self-paced. It saves as you go. Videos are between like a minute and six minutes long. Um, some teachers even do this with their students, which is a great idea. Um, and it, it's going to teach you all of our basic features. So. Do that as, um, when you have some time, it's about 45 minutes to an hour. And at, well, after you complete that, you're going to get a digital badge as well as a certificate for completion. And you have and John as your are, yeah, yeah, right. We're in the, and we're in the process of revamping. So um, if you're that type of person who's like, oh gosh, 14 videos or 20 videos, uh, get it done, right? Because we're revamping that program. So uh, get it done while there's less videos if you're interested. But uh, yeah, definitely some great stuff in there. So thank you for sharing that, Catherine. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so then next, um, after that, uh, we also have our YouTube channel. So again, plenty of videos on our YouTube. I don't even know how many we have on our YouTube channel right now. But there's tons of videos on there. And again, like Catherine said, we'll share out the link to this book a little bit later. Um, and once you're there, you can click on any of these uh, books and resources and links that we have inside this book and you can view those kind of on your own. So, all right, well, that brings us to today, right? What is Be An Author Month? Um, it's something we made up. <laughs> so to be completely honest, there's a lot of great things happening in March and we decided that, you know what, let's let's do this and let's make it Be An Author Month, right? And, and so why did we do this? Um, well, because it's been a year, right, for everyone, um, maybe even a couple of years, right? And I can't believe we're almost pushing like two and a half years of this pandemic or three years of the pandemic. I don't even know anymore. It has been crazy, right, for everyone. And I think everyone at this point has been through something, right, whether it's uh, the virus or, um, you know, just things going on in the world. Like there's so many things that have been happening in the last couple of years. Um, that we've all been affected. And I think what is, um, you know, maybe the good out of that is that because of that, we all have a story to tell, right? And and um, other people might benefit from that story. Other people might be interested in those stories. And so that's what we decided. We decided, you know what, let's, let's celebrate March, right? By having this be an author month and let's all share our stories. Um, and not only just sharing them in English, language arts and reading and writing classes, but how can we share our stories in all classes, right? In all subject areas. And how can we get writing involved uh, in all of those areas? And so that's kind of the kind of the gist, right, behind what we are uh, going to be talking about here today. And one of the things um, that we have, I always forget, I need to go to play mode here. One of the things that we have is a blog post, all right? And so I'm gonna open up this blog post and just kind of give you a a quick little rundown. We're certainly not going to read this entire blog post to you here this evening, um, but this blog post about being being author month has tons and tons of ideas in it. And so, you know, again, starts off with just saying that we are we all have stories. Uh, there is a nice little table of contents here, so you can skip to write uh, the section that you really want to go to first. Um, but again, lots of strategies and ideas. 
uh, for using storytelling in your classroom, right? So your students can all be authors. And so tons of links for resources, ideas for engaging the struggling readers and writers, uh, the book creator origin story, right? So if you're not aware of the story, uh, Dan Amos, our founder, uh, his son uh, was struggling with dyslexia and they didn't really know it at the time. Uh, that, that diagnosis came later, um, but the basic idea was that their son was really struggling with reading and writing and they tried to find some way to help him and the best way they could figure that out was to create their own app. And so um, Dan did, and the rest is kind of history. Uh, we do have this reading pack, right, which is really awesome. So if you are interested in some of the resources there, you can click on this link, sign up for the reading pack, and you'll get all of these amazing resources and templates and things like that that you can download. Um, and inside that pack, you'll see resources like this book here from Monica Burns, templates, vocabulary notebooks, and more. So I definitely want you to take a look at that. All right, and again, like Catherine said, we can go into our, um, you know, our resources page there in the teacher dashboard, and you're gonna get lots of ideas uh, for using Book Creator with your classrooms. Um, but before, but other than that, um, tonight, what Catherine and I really wanted to focus on uh, was three major themes uh, for this month. And the first one is World Storytelling Day. All right, and so World Storytelling Day, I think I have the date right in my head, March 20th. So it's coming up soon, World Storytelling Day. And so again, what are some of the ways that we can use Book Creator to help tell our stories or how can students tell their stories? And so on this page, we just have a blank page. I'm gonna share a few of my favorite features and Catherine, maybe you can shout out a, a few of your favorite pieces of Book Creator. Um, that you really like for storytelling. All right, but my first one, my absolute favorite for storytelling isn't the text, right? Or isn't comics or anything like that. My favorite piece for storytelling is the record button. And I absolutely love the record button because it allows students to record their voice and put that right into the book. And so maybe it's a special ed teacher and me coming out but I had students who could not physically write, or I had students who had this disconnect between their brain and their hands and the pen or pencil and getting it onto the paper. And so sometimes the only way that I could get out of those students their story is by asking them to tell it to me. All right, and so I absolutely love this. So if, if you've never used Book Creator, you click Start Recording, it gives you a little countdown. Um, a few years ago, I learned how to become an auto detailer on the side just by simply being bored on a Saturday night. And this is that story. Now I'm gonna stop it right there. I'm not gonna bore everybody with that story, but there is the audio button. And so as a student, I could simply record my voice and put it right there on the page. And then there's other tools that we have at our disposal that I could add to the page too to spice it up and make it look a little bit better than a white page with a you know with an audio button. But I think this is very powerful because now we can tell our stories through voice. And those stories can go with us for a long time. The other thing I like about this is that there might be others who want to share their story. And so uh, one of my favorite activities is in interviewing somebody within your community, right, to understand their story. And so you can interview them and just click the record button, record that entire interview and put it right there on the page. And then maybe on the page, you put some uh, highlights and, and, and images and favorite things that you learned from that conversation. But at least this way, I can have that entire conversation there if I want it. So love the idea of using the record button for storytelling. All right, Catherine, what's one of your favorite tools that we have to help kind of address storytelling, uh, World Storytelling Day? One of mine would be um, our comic features. So I love the panels. Um, we Yeah, we have the comic features. If you pick one of the comic books, definitely love the comic panels for that. Um, so they can retell, they can make their own comics. Um, they have the little speech bubbles in them as well. Yeah, they can make, they can connect it to the pictures, images. Um, I also think the comic panels are great for English language learners too, to break it down into different sections. Um, yeah, they can use images, videos, different things like that. Um, but I really love the comic feature as for storytelling as well. And they can just be so creative with that. We also have templates. 
um, templates uh, when you go to the my book section, sorry to make you go out, <laughs> sorry, to okay. but when you click on the new book button, we have a set of templates um, right to the right of that. And I really like there's certain templates for storytelling. Um, we have a fiction book. Um, we have an, um, down there, we have like a fantasy book. They can be really creative with those. There's a nonfiction textbook. We even have photo books. So they can do a photo book for storytelling, just different ways for students can really be creative. And you know what I love most about this, Catherine? I, I always kind of say to people in general, I'm not a huge fan of templates because I don't want to read 35 of the exact same thing. But a lot of times with templates, what I love about them is that it gives kids this idea, right, of what book creator can be, specifically high school students. Because a lot of times, you know, high school students, middle school students, they look at book creator and they're like, yeah, it's, it's easy, right? Well, it is, right? There's no secret there. It is easy. But these templates are amazing uh, in their designs, and it really gives kids an idea of what a book could look like if they really put some thought into it. And so I love these templates specifically for that. Um, but I also love templates because every once in a while you'll get to that blank page and a kid or a teacher um, just gets paralyzed, right? <laughs> because they have no idea what to do, right, with that blank page. And so I absolutely love the ability to use those templates for that as well. So yeah, definitely. So World Storytelling Day on the 20th. See if you can get your kids telling stories, you know, retelling stories, doing some amazing stuff on World Storytelling Day. And if you decide to tweet some of that kind of stuff out, use the hashtag, hashtag be an author month, and we'll go from there. All right. So I think that was the hashtag. Was that the hashtag be an author month? I think it was. <laughs> I think it's just, isn't it just be an author? Maybe it's just be an author. It's on the last page. So I forgot because. I'll double check. All right, we'll double check, but I think it's being author, but by the time we get done this webinar, we'll have that figured out. All right, and then the very next day, right after World Storytelling Day is World Poetry Day. And so I absolutely love um, reading some poems from students. I love making connections with poetry to music uh, for students who, you know, when you say poetry and they're kind of like, eh, I don't like poetry, right? You start making those connections with music. And in this, um, we have a couple of examples of books uh, that that involve poetry. And so uh, shameless plug here, um, but this was one of the books that my students um, and I worked with. Uh, and this was a global collaboration project that I helped do with, you know, I think it was 38 classrooms from 27 different countries. And basically on, for this one, we just wrote poems about where we lived. All right, and so it was really cool. So this was from Saskatchewan and they made this nice little poem here about where they live. So there it is, hashtag be an author. All right, so these are awesome and lots of uh, different ways that kids were able to get their information in here. So global collaboration projects all around poetry. This one <clears throat> is another uh, poetry book. Now this one actually has a blog post that goes along with it. And this is from Karen Bosch. Um, but we've got a lot of awesome stuff and she did this project on their iPads. All right. And so again, lots of amazing poetry uh, written by students and teachers um, in here. And I, I love the way this one is set up, right? As we're just flipping through this, I love the way this page looks um, and it's got the snow in the background and it's got the audio button so you can hear the student's voice. And I don't know why, but the way the, the words are kind of um, placed reminds me of the snow falling, right? So really, really cool stuff. And at the time, they actually published their books to the iBook store, right? And now you can even publish them straight online uh, through Book Creator, which we're actually going to talk about um, a little bit later. All right. And then the, this link that is also in the book is just a collection of some of the poetry books that we have found. All right. And so if you're really interested in this, there are some amazing books in here. So I definitely encourage you to take a look at the poetry. All right, and then again, kind of the same thing. Um, other ways that you can tell poems, right? How can you do your poetry inside of Book Creators? We already talked about comics. We already talked about using the audio button, but there are some other really awesome ways that you can use um, the Book Creator to, to tell your story. And, and some of those um, might be involving just simple text, but then adding some other elements to it to really make that visual. And so if you have your poem in here in text, 
maybe I can click the more button and use some of our newest features to add extra elements, right? To really put some excitement into the poem. So maybe I want to use a Giphy, right? And maybe I'm talking about a poem with, uh, you know, Monday, right? And coffee and things like that. And so I can add a cool little animated GIF in there to kind of enhance my story. Same kind of thing with uh, using the more button and the animated emojis, right? Maybe, uh, maybe it's a love poem and I can put in some love eyes right in there to, to enhance the story. So a lot of amazing features inside of Book Creator. Catherine, how about you? What's one more of your favorite features that you might want to put in there for World Poetry Day? Um, for Poetry Day, I know I we have the new integration with Canva. So that would uh, be yes. another one that I would love to use as well. Awesome. So yeah, so you click that more button and then choose Canva. Now these all do have to be turned on um, and we have instructions for that in uh, all of our webinars. But once you do that, you then get to Canva and you can go through and find all of these graphic organizers. You can use some of Canva's own elements and uh, images and things like that. And you're just gonna, we'll just pretend here, uh, but you pretend like this is what I chose as the template I can go through here. I can mix and match. I can edit any of this stuff that's here. And then when it's done, we click that magic add to book button. And then that design that we created in Canva goes straight to our book creator page. Now I'm gonna move it to the, oops, click on it and we'll move it to the back. And the reason I'm going to move it to the back is because I can then show you that, look, I can use the cool Canva design that I made, but now I can add Book Creator right on top of it, right? So you can use both tools and create this amazing stuff right within Book Creator. All right. Can, uh, anything else there, Catherine, about Canva? Yeah, just to add for what I really like to do with it for students, especially for Canva, if you want a place to start, because sometimes it might be a little overwhelming is do a book cover. So even if they were doing for a poetry for their poem, they might want to do a cover for that. Or maybe you're doing a class collaborative book. You could do a cover for all of the poetry, all of the poems. Um, start somewhere small like that and just do a book cover, a, a front and back one. Um, I think they really come out really nicely done. Um, so that's just a one idea of where to start with using Canva. Yep, absolutely. And just an FYI, kind of a side note here, insider tip here is that the book style you choose dictates which book covers Canva has created for us, right? And in conjunction with us. So if I choose a landscape book like we have right now, I'm going to get a different set of book covers than I would if I were to choose the portrait book. And so if I choose the portrait book, I gotta get a whole separate section of, of book covers. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have some students who are like, oh, I love this monster book cover, and then you have another student that says, I don't see the monster book cover, where is it? That's because it is dictated by the size of the book. So keep that in mind. All right, and then the other thing that's happening here in March is that it is Women's History Month. And so Women's History Month, very important, right? Because lots of women have made huge contributions to our world, and this is awesome. And so in this book um, specifically, again, this is a, a template, all right? So when you get the link to the book here, um, Catherine, I just realized we'll probably need to publish this book before we, uh, our presentation book, uh, before we uh, give it out to everybody else. Um, but here in this um, book, this is awesome because not only can you click on the link and read the book, you can also remix the book. So if you find stuff here that you like, you can click the remix button, choose the library that you are in or want it to go in and then click copy. And then you will have a copy of this book in your own library that you can edit. Now this is a book that we worked um, in conjunction with Hillsborough County Public Schools in Florida. Uh, they helped us with this and um, this is really awesome. So as you flip through this book, it gives you a little bit of information about Women's History Month, a little bit about the project all right, that this school district has done, um, and some other tools and resources for finding great information for Women's History Month. Um, but this school district decided to make this a choice board. All right, and so here we have some choice board options. And over here we have different activities. And so for Women's History Month, we, uh, the, the district and, and, and here at Book Creator, we wanted people to find uh, a woman that meant something to them. And 
uh, that had a, an integral part in the history uh, of this world. And so what ways could we demonstrate that learning? Maybe it's a timeline, maybe it's a Venn diagram, quiz, video diary, collage. And so you're gonna simply click on any of these and it's gonna take you to that section of the book and give you some ideas. So again, all of this can be edited and changed if you want once you click that remix button and put it into your library. So we took some of their ideas and we got our graphic designer Gavin to come in here and, and make things really cool looking. And so we've got all these different ways that you and your students can then um, you know, uh, uh, celebrate Women's History Month by creating these amazing projects. So definitely want you to take a look at that uh, and, and have a go at uh, you know, adding that to your library. All right. And then the last part of our, um, our, our blog post and the last specific part today uh, of our webinar is that secret sauce, right? What is the secret? Uh, to getting students excited about writing and excited about school and and it's a whole separate webinar and, and I'm sure for some of you who know me you have probably heard this or seen this before um, but for me that secret sauce uh, and I think here at Book Creator I think we all kind of agree with this that secret sauce um, is the ability for students to take their work and put it somewhere else all right because if we think about it we are the ones who continue to see the work that these students do. Uh, and for a lot of times, a lot of students that we're, we're just that audience of one. And, and, and really that's just not quite good enough anymore, right? These students are craving bigger audiences. And if you, if you don't believe me, look at YouTube and look at Instagram and all the social media, TikTok, all that stuff. There's kids have thousands and thousands of followers on these social media platforms. And so they want others to be able to see their work. And so for us, that secret sauce is the ability to publish that student work. And so right here um, is our book, and I'm just gonna quickly run through the publishing process. You're just gonna click the share button, and then you're gonna click publish online. All right, and so Catherine did this already for our book, but basically you give it a title, author, give it a description, and then you're gonna choose whether you want that book to be private or public. If it's private, only people with the link can see that book. So parents, community members, Twitter, principals, whatever, whoever you share that book out with. If the book is public, then that means anybody can see the book. All right. If they're on Google and they happen to check, you know, Google search, be an author month, they might, they might find our book. And then this is where you can turn on that remixing ability or not. So if you think you've created a really cool template that you want others to be able to have, turn remixing on and let them download your template into their own libraries. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to, you choose off and that's it. And then you click a button that says publish and that's it, our book is now online and visible. But for me, not only did we have the secret sauce, right, which was the kids publishing their work, but it was the secret, secret sauce that really made the difference for me and that is this piece right here, which is analytics. And in the analytics tab, as the teacher, you can see how many times that book has been read and how many countries that book has been read in. And I promise you there is nothing more engaging for those students who maybe didn't even want to write in the first place. There's nothing more engaging than telling them, hey, your book has been read 75 times in 13 different countries. And when those happen, the little dots start popping up all over the map. And I actually looked up today, uh, one of our books that has the most downloads ever, right? And I'm gonna give you a second to kind of think about that. How many downloads did the book, the, the most downloads ever or, or views ever, which book or, you know, how many is that? And so I'll give you a second to think about it. I'm just kind of maybe put that number in your head and I'll give you the answer. The drum roll, please. The answer is the book had over 100,000 uh, views, which is, unbelievable right now i happen to know that that book was also put into uh, the ibook store and it had thousands of downloads there as well so something totally amazing it's just amazing to see um, what can happen when students uh, publish their work and get it out there for a wider audience all right all right catherine anything else for the good of the order before we get to that special surprise I don't think so. 
All right. Oh, we have a question. How did you get to analytics? Ah, yeah, perfect. So, uh, Jonette, once I have published the book, all right, I'm going to click on the link. I see book details, and then right next to it, I see analytics. So that's how you're going to get there. Now, it is one of our paid features. So if you do click on analytics and you don't see the analytics, uh, you will have to either subscribe or you know try a trial of Book Creator. Um, you know we have that 14-day trial for uh, collaboration. Um, maybe your school district uh, could pilot Book Creator, something like that. But that is part of our paid plans. But uh, but right there. So click on the book itself. Click the link here. See the book details, and right next to it is analytics. Yep, great question. All right, actually, while I'm thinking about it, let me copy that link. I'm going to put that book right there into the chat window. So if you do want to go through and view the resources in this book, you could certainly do so. But that brings us to our special surprise here today. And that special surprise is this. Catherine, you want to, you want to unleash it? Tell everybody. Sure, yes. So um, what we want you to do is we want you to participate in Be an Author Month. Um, so while your students are creating stories throughout the month of March, we would love to see what they are creating. So if you can share on social media, on Twitter with hashtag be an author and whatever you're doing, it can be a picture of them creating, it can be one of their books it published, um, or just the story of what they're doing, anything with just hashtag be an author. We are going to collect all of those. <laughs> Um, and um, put you in a raffle. And then at the end of the month, we are going to be raffling off some names and selecting one um, and sending you some swag for your class. So not only will you get some swag, but your students are going to get some swag as well. So that will be exciting for them to get some stuff from Book Creator. Um, so obviously we will message you on Twitter if you are the winner and also shout you out um, and then we will get your address the best address to send that to you and we will send you some swag so it will be something just exciting to do to get everyone um participating yeah and awesome and just keep in mind when you're going about and doing this uh student privacy right is is a big thing uh so as you're posting images on twitter and sharing links to books that have been made just make sure that your kids are okay with that your parents are okay with that and your school is okay with that um, I personally have not had many issues with that in the past, so I don't anticipate a whole lot of issues going forward, but uh, just keep in mind uh, student privacy and things like that as you do move forward with this. But we are super, super excited uh, to see what all of you and your students create. And from uh, for that, we just want to say thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we'll stick around. So if you have any questions, you can put those into the chat window here. We'll stick around for a couple minutes. Um, if not, maybe if you want to in the chat window, any ideas that are percolating in your head, if you want to put those into the chat window, we'd love to see those here before we go. Um, but if not, thanks for being here. Uh, be safe out there and happy bookmaking, everyone. All right, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Natalia. Stephanie, thank you. Wonderful. All right, Sandra, Don, awesome. Glad, Stephanie, glad to hear that kids love book creator. That's, yeah. that's always the best. Yes. All right. Chris, thank you. Viana, thank you. All right. You're very welcome, Amy. Oh, lovely. Thank All you right. for joining us. Awesome. Awesome. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Awesome. And Mira. Oh, Mira's Hi, here. Mira. Hi, Mira. Yay. <laughs> we were just talking about you today. I don't, know if you're, I don't know if your ears were burning or not, but we were talking about you. <laughs> So awesome. Very good. Glad to see you. <laughs> really? Yeah. About what? Mm. It's top secret, Mira. <laughs> we were talking about your, uh, your library webinar that you mm. did. And, and how great uh, it was. Yeah, how amazing it was and how many people showed up and the resources. And uh, we're thinking about uh, sharing out that link uh, to some, some people. So yeah, awesome. And Jasmine, so if a student is publishing his book for the public, where do others find the book? Um, they actually, when a student publishes their book, it's private. So the public cannot find their book. If you want the public to find the book, you will need to publish the book for them. You as the teacher can make a book public if you wish. Yeah, and 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 by default, uh, just, was it Jasmine, I think is what you said. Yeah. yeah. 
So by default, students cannot publish their books. Um, only the teacher can, so that's something you have to go into the library settings and turn on if you want the students to publish their books. If you don't, if you don't, and you want to be totally in control of it, that's fine. Just leave it as is and you go publish the books. Um, but if you do want your students publishing it, you have to turn that feature on. But like Catherine said, it is still, pub or it is still private when students publish it. It's not public. All right. Well, I am not seeing any other questions. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate it. Thanks, Have everyone. a great day, everybody. Have a great day. At or evening, wherever you are. Yep.